and welcome to this month's Janome Stitch Club UK. Uh, my name is Julia, I'm one of the Janome educators and every month we try to look at some things on our machines that are going to help you to hopefully have a, an easier time of it and get more creative as well. Now this month I thought it was about time we bit the bullet and took a look at overlockers. Now I know there are a lot of people out there who love them there are also a lot of people out there who are terrified of them i teach classes and i i see this an awful lot of the time um but the thing is the overlocker honestly once you get your head around it it literally is a game changer it certainly changed my sewing life particularly when it comes to dressmaking and particularly when it comes to using things like stretch fabrics which let's face it are absolutely everywhere even if you're just doing repairs. So I thought that we'd just start a little look here. So I've just gone through a few things. I want to go through a few things this month um, that I get asked an awful lot in class. And then I want to sort of throw it open to you because I think this obviously is going to warrant another video. So I would quite like you to ask what else you would like to see in the next video because today is going to be a fairly sort of a basic run through um, if you like of what the overlocker can do but there's an awful lot more that they can do um, and certainly we can get onto more techniques with that but I wanted to start at the beginning um, it's a very good place to start don't worry I'm not going to sing it so I have got sorry I should have said Janome do for overlockers there is the air thread which is a fabulous machine um, there is also the 6234XL, which I've got one of those today. Um, the 9300DX, which you will also find there's a John Lewis 9200DX, same machine. Um, and there is also the 8002, which I believe is on offer at the moment, actually. Um, and you often find that in retailers as well. So across the four models, there's hopefully a price point that's going to hit everybody um, and like with everything the more you pay the easier it gets so certainly the air thread is obviously going to be the easier one to thread the easier one for all sorts of reasons now I am not playing with that one I don't have one in my sewing room but also I think there's quite a, a bit of stuff out there on that anyway and it's not generally a beginner's machine either so I kind of wanted to go in with the sort of machines that you might start on okay so i'm just going to be looking at the 9300 and the 6234 today i will go briefly through uh the uh threading on both of them the more or less the, the troubleshooting really of where people struggle a little bit with the threading and then i want to look at things like the tension and differential feed and what exactly they are for and then we'll look at a a rolled hem and a narrow hem okay so I'm hoping that we'll get through a lot of that we may skip over bits uh, as ever though I am live in the chat tonight and I will also I will, this video will remain up so any questions that you ask please put them down in the comments because I do always answer them so uh, anything as I'm talking that you want to see covered maybe in the next video or uh, if you're struggling on your particular machine or with something in particular what I've also done is there is a PDF download I did a video um, a while back uh, it's one of the earlier ones on all the stretch stitches on your sewing machine and for it we had these uh, little sampler header cards so I've done a similar thing uh, but covering all the things like the different loopers etc and the differential feed so that you can actually go through and do some little test swatches yourself on the fabrics in a similar uh, vein to that okay and that is a pdf download which again i will put a link in the comments below so i think we need to crack on because there's quite a lot that we need to get through this week so let's turn around and have a look at the overlocker 
So here we go. Let's have a little look at the overlocker and its a sort of anatomy. Now, the first thing to say about an overlocker is it works in a, a different way to your sewing machine. OK, what you're looking for with an overlocker is this chain stitch. OK, rather than straight stitch. Now, the point of that is that what it does is it seams and it cuts and it neatens those seams that is the beauty of it that's why we love it that's why we want to use it but the key thing about this chain and i think this is the major point of it is if it doesn't have this chain it's not going to work now i don't know if any of you had those little um, i think they were called french knitting dollies when you were small um, i certainly had one uh, I haven't got it with me, obviously, because it's a bit old, uh, made out of a cotton reel and you put four little nails in the top of it and then you threaded round your wool and then you used a crochet hook, didn't you? And you, you unhooked it and then you ended up with this really long chain of uh, crocheted thread, which you then did for about usually about 50 metres or yards in those days. And uh, then you thought, I have no idea what I'm supposed to do with this. But it kept us out of trouble, kept us amused. This is what the overlocker is doing, OK? It is making that chain. And in the same way as your little French knitting dolly, these threads, it's really important. They have to be done in the right way so that they can lay on top of each other to make that chain. That is why the threading is absolutely key on an overlocker. OK, the thing that makes it easy, though, is that all overlockers now come with this lovely little coloured guide. So it talks you through. And one of the best ways to do this when you first get your overlocker, they normally come threaded. And I'm sorry to upset everybody, but the first thing you need to do is take those threads off and learn how to thread your machine. Um, if you thread them each with a different colour and if possible, I've done it over here a corresponding colour to the colours that are marked on your machine. Not only will that help you with the threading process, but it will also help you to work out exactly where the problem lies if there is an issue going on. Um, this one here has got little pictures and even on the 93 and the 8 the 9300 and the 8002 in the instruction book there will be the same pictures showing that if there is an issue going on you can work out which thread it is because when you actually see the stitching it's quite complicated to work out which thread is actually the issue okay that said the threading itself which i think everybody finds a little bit of a kind of ooh, because you open it up and you just look at it and go oh my goodness me and let's face it if we open the other side as well wow we're seeing it all going on there and that can be quite scary. However, just think through this one, your lower looper. OK, this is the one that is usually the trickier one to thread. I'm going to do two little videos in a minute that I'm going to slot in about the threading, but I'll do those towards the end of the video because I want to concentrate on other stuff first. But that is the most tricky one, usually. And there's a knack or there's a little, this one's got a little uh, little gadget inside that helps you. Once you've got your head around that, that doesn't go through a needle. You do that one. This one here, it's easy. It's there, 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 there. Boom, you're done. The two top ones go in the needle. So they're pretty much the same as when you're threading your sewing machine. So when you break it down, not actually as scary as you might think. OK, tension discs, having four tension discs, that can often be a little bit off putting as well. The one thing I will say about this, and I always start a class by saying this, is do not touch your tension discs. OK, when we start off sewing, there are two other things that we can look at. We've got stitch length over here, which is this top one, and we've got what's called the differential feed, which is this one here. OK, and these are the two things that I always say you look at these before you even touch the tension. It's quite rare that the tension on these machines needs to be fiddled with. OK, so I normally start mine are on um, usually three and a half between three and a half and four. 
and they stay pretty much on that all the time. There's only a few times when I actually mess around with the tension. The rest of the time, what I'm actually changing are these two here, and I will explain more about that in a minute. Okay. Now, I just quickly wanted to go over the threading. I'm on the 9300DX at the moment, and I think the thing that uh, I find in classes that lots of people struggle with is this one that's under here. So I just wanted to show you a quick little tip. So I've come down from the top and I'm following my diagram here. So I'm on all the, the greens. Okay, so sometimes it's easier to use, bits are easier with the squeezes and bits aren't. So we've gone through this one here. And this is the key, they are colour coordinated. Okay, and then this one here. Now that first one that I did, I think you saw was a hook. So what I did there was you can grab either end and then slot it in. These two here are holes and I've gone through these two. Now coming through here, I need to go through another hook. And if I turn the machine, I'm just going to pause the camera so I can get the angle right. OK, so I've just shifted the machine round. So I'm hoping that you can now see. I'm in as close as I can get, I'm afraid. So to see where we're going next, I'm going to drop the actual blade. So I've pushed in the second one here and I've dropped the blade out of the way. And I'm hoping that you can now see if, if you're on your machine, you will see this much easier. Trust me. You'll now see I've cranked the handle so that I've got this one here, which is my next one. I can see it just behind here. OK, so. What I want to do is I want to pass the thread through. OK, so I've got my thread here at the end and then I'm going to do it with the tweezers. So hopefully you can see and then I just pull it up. OK, so that is now in that slot. The next one that I want to do is round this side. So. I'm going to pause again so I can move the machine. I'm sorry for all the kerfuffle, but I, I really want you to see exactly what I'm doing. When you're on your machine, you'll actually see it much easier, obviously. But I want you to see exactly what it is you're, you're looking for. Now, I've moved it round. And even though I've moved it, I can't get in much better than this. I've cranked the handle again so that it's come back the other way. And always towards you, always towards you. And I've now got where I need to go. And this is another hole. OK, not a slot. I can't get in any closer because I've got this door on here. But um, I will put in a photo because I did get a much better photo close up. Because what I want to do is feed that in through here. OK, get it in properly. Make sure you've got a good thread out of the end. OK, so now I'm back at the other angle. So I've got my thread. So I'm through that one there. I'm through this one at the back. And I now, if I crank my handle forward, I need to go in this bit here. OK, at the top. So one way to do that is to just get your tweezers in the gap. And this is why it's helpful not to have the blade up at this point. So now I'm just checking, I'm pulling, so I know that it's not caught around anything because I, I, because I'm filming, I can't get in to double check. My head would normally be right in where you need to see. So this is now up here and that's ready to go in that top bit there. OK, so I'm now in that top bit there. I unintentionally paused it there, but actually I've just snipped the end off. If you're struggling to get it through, just snip the end off so you've got a nice clean end there. So that is the whole of your first one done. So we've come down through here and like I say, follow the guide. And it's just double check. Yep, yeah, that it's in all of those because can you see? I think because I was 
fiddle faddling around moving the machine I've pulled that one out there so I've just slotted that back in okay so I just wanted to show you that that is your your sort of your base okay for the first one now make sure you bring your blade back up if you did put it around once you've got the hang of it I don't always take the blade down because I kind of know what I'm doing without actually having to look at it now um but as I say with, with all of these machines it's practice it really is practice and that bottom one that lower looper that is always the trickiest one to get to on this the other model that's the same is the 8002 I haven't got one of these here to show you but the insides are pretty much the same so you'll have that same kind of workings as you go along so next one up this is much simpler I'm just bringing it down and we're now going through the um, the dusky pink or the red okay and again follow your chart along here so there's one slot there okay and then I'm just gonna get that out of the way so you can see and we then go behind this like I say, it's easier when you do it with your hands for this bit rather than the thing. So I've just gone behind that little slot there. And again, you can see it in the picture. And then I'm going to go through that hole there. And again, I'm just going to trim that end off and take that through. If you can't get to it, like I say, crank the handle just to get it in, in position. Okay. I think this is the thing actually that's most annoying about overlockers is that their innards are so fussy you've just got to be really careful because look you can see I've just caught that round there so just make sure you're not caught round anything I, I need to stress that if you haven't got an overlocker and you're watching this and it's making you think oh my idiot don't panic because to be perfectly honest you don't thread your overlocker very often it's not like a sewing machine where you're constantly changing the thread and the needles etc etc my overlocker is a beast of burden it literally just sits on the table and most of the time i've got multicolored in here because i'm showing you the different um the, di the different actual uh loopers etc but most of the time if it's winter it's navy or black if it's summer it's gray or white that's literally it so <laughs> it probably gets changed as the seasons change and that is pretty much it and it just sits there ready to go so that one's done so again make sure you're going behind the blade there so they are up and ready make sure nothing is twisted that one was just a little bit twisted round okay and we should be good to go I'm going to do the needles I won't bother showing you the needles because um, they're pretty straightforward. OK, we're just going to come down up over and then down and in the needle. They're pretty much the same as when you're doing your sewing machine. So I think if you kind of separate that off and go, OK, the first one, the green one, that's the one to practice. So here's a quick run through of that lower looper thread. Um, this time I'm on the 6234XL. So I've come down from the top and I'm following the greens again. So through this one, this have a, has a little switch, goes from two to three, four threads. Um, as I say, we'll go through the two thread stuff in a later video. Um, not all overlockers have that. Right, so, sorry, I've got the camera in front of me, so it's a bit awkward. So we're going through that one first, this one here, this one here. Okay. Now, if you remember on the 9300, there was, it was under here. On this one, there's a little arrow here. And if we just push that up, it pops out so that we can actually get to it okay so 
I'm just going to go under that one. And then if I crank it forward just a little bit, you'll see even more. There's a little hook here. And that's the next one that I'm going to go around because when I push that back in, so can you see I'm holding it here? So I've gone through that one and then around this little hook and then we just push it back that way. It's taken it through that one at the end. So now all we have to do is go through that one there. So if you've got any kind of sort of, um, you know, eyesight, I'm finding eyesight is a big thing for me. Actually, I'm finding this quite difficult because I'm very, I need quite strong glasses for this kind of close up work. And I'm not close enough because I've got the camera here. So for, um, for that, or if you've got issues, and like I say, bear in mind, I have got a camera here. That's why this is, I'm making this look quite tricky, but I'm trying to get the camera at the closest angle I can with the machine still on a table. Okay, and then that's good to go. So that little gadget there on its own, honestly, worth its weight in gold. The differential feed, just to explain what that is, if you lift your presser foot and take a look underneath, and I'll put a little picture in because I'll actually take the foot off so that I can show you a proper picture. You've got two sets of teeth under here, okay? Unlike on your sewing machine where you've only got one set of feed dogs, you've got two, one behind the other. And what these do is they take the fabric through at speeds, but in the same way as a walking foot, the even feed foot, evens up the speed at which things are fed through, this double whammy on the differential is going to do the same thing. So if you're finding that things are separating or a bit wobbly or something like that, this is what you're going to look at. And again, we'll look at that in a minute. So that's the differential feed. This one's also got a setting here for standard and rolled hem. And again, we're going to come back and look at that. So that is just a, an overview of the machine. The 9300, pretty much the same. Dials on the side. The rolled hem setting is just in here. Um, and what's the only... Oh, the 8002, the tension discs are actually discs on the front of the machine. Okay, so that's just the sort of differences between those three. But you're still going to have the same things on it, okay? So first up, let's look at the differential feed and what exactly that is going to be doing, okay? I've taken it down. It normally runs between 0.5, okay? And then you can take it up to 2, okay? So I'm going to take it all the way down to... 0.5 pretty much okay and I've got here this is scuba so there's a, a reasonable amount of stretch on that but it's not hugely stretchy but we're going to go through a few different ones so let's get that under and started and can you see it's kind of almost struggling isn't it and it's struggling because that differential feed is so low. If I now take that up, you can see it's, it's easing through a bit more, isn't it? And I have to shout because there's no way of quieting down an overlocker, I'm afraid. So you can see here, look, it was really struggling to get that through, to feed that through, wasn't it? And then I changed it and now suddenly it's opened it up a little bit. But can you see there's a definite bow going on here? And what you're looking for when you're sewing a seam is that when you turn it inside out, you don't have wobbles going on. OK, and if you don't get the differential feed right, that is exactly what you're going to have. So I'm going to take that up a little bit more. I'm going to take it up to about 1.5 and then run it again. So 
So you can see how much easier it took that and look, absolutely flat, perfect. And that's what we're looking for, okay? And then when we turn it through, it's gonna sit absolutely flat for us on that seam. Okay, I've got enough wibbles and wobbles going on down the side. I don't need it anymore in the fabric, thank you very much. I always think that one of the best ways of getting to know about the differential feed is to get as many different types of stretch fabric as you can and then just play with it. That's why I said about the um, little sample cards because you'll find that you'll probably tend to use the same fabrics over and over again. Um, we always find a, a bit of a favourite. Um, I tend to like using cottons quite a lot. So something like this, which is a lightweight, nice stretch though, full way stretch, but not mega stretchy. Um, but things like that. So if I can work out, you know, my favourite settings for that fabric, then the next time I actually come to make something, I know exactly what I need to actually set my machine on. So I'm going to go through with this one now. And I've still got my differential on one there. Okay, but look, there's a slight, can you see? There's just a slight bowing to it. So I'm going to take that up to 1.5 on that one. better look sitting really flat and if I then turn that through there we go completely flat on that seam which is exactly what you want but you've still got the stretch that you need which is what the overlocker gives you okay so from the point of view of what these loopers are doing what the actual threads are doing You've got your lower and upper looper and they are the ones that are forming that sort of zigzag stitch and they're doing that across the stitch finger which is in here. I'll pop a little photo of that up. And then these two at the top are the ones that are actually doing the seaming. Okay, and you've got, you can see that you've got two lines when you actually have a seam. Where's that one gone? When you're actually looking at a seam, I've done slightly different shades of yellow on here. So you can see the light yellow, this one here, is that very top, the left needle. And then the sort of orangey colour, the second line, is this one here. Now, this is the safety stitch, the second one, and this is the actual seam. Okay, so bearing that in mind, this means that if you are doing uh, a really unusual colour for example on a garment what I will often do is rather than changing out all of my threads I will literally just change those top two threads there because they're the ones that are actually going to show so I make sure I get the best match I can with the two that are going through the needle so that bearing that in mind most of the time on my overlocker I have got big cones on the bottom two here and um, I think I've said it I'd probably say it several times, but it's normally black in winter and white in summer. I'm, I'm that predictable. So bearing that in mind, back to the threading, these are the two that you're going to do. So you don't tend to have to re-thread everything all the time. Okay, so that's just a, a quick look at what the differential feed is doing. You've also got stitch length on here. Now, as with everything... What stitch length is going to affect is the thickness. The thickness of a fabric is going to affect the stitch length. This one here, which as you can see, it's a kind of um, sweat shirting with a kind of bubbly effect. It's quite an unusual fabric. Quite thick though. So if I tried it on a sort of a, a two, Let's see, it might not like this. But I can feel the machine 
is struggling and it's not particularly happy. It's okay, it's doing it. But, but if we look, that looks a little bit messy. And once again, we've got that bow. So I'm going to take my stitch length up because that looks far too close together to me. And I'm just going to take my differential up again. I'll do it on the other side so that you can actually see. And you can see it's taking it through a lot quicker. This was a funny one because it had almost like the different layers to it. So yeah, this, this funny back layer, can you see? But much better for the stitch length on that one. And I will probably go all the way up to two, to be honest, because there's still a little bit of bowing going on, isn't there? So this is what I mean about these, that rather than thinking, oh my goodness, it's wobbling, it's stretchy, it's doing this, it's doing that, and looking at the tension, these are the two things to always look at first. The other thing is sometimes you'll get something where the stitching is too loopy on the outside edge okay so it doesn't look neat enough if, if you've got that going on and very often if you look closely I'm going to try and come in a little bit closer to here this is where the blade is here okay this button here at the front I'm too close in now hang on this button here this one here is the blade the one in front of it actually moves the blade. So can you see that moving? So if you've got a lot of looping going on, just move your blade out. Okay, that's the equivalent of your stitch width, I suppose. Um, so sometimes that's, that's the way to achieve that. So these are other things that you can always look at before you start playing around with those. Okay, so the thing I really wanted to get on to, though, to be honest, was rolled hems because I, I found quite a few people recently who have never even tried a rolled hem on their overlocker. And we are approaching summer, and frankly, summer is the time for the rolled hem to really come into its own. And if you are a lazy sewer, a bit like myself then the rolled hem means that basically you can make lots of really nice little summer tops and summer dresses completely on your overlocker in really flimsy fine fabrics but with a really lovely finish. So let's take a look at the rolled hem. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take off this top thread and I normally just hang it over the top so I don't completely unthread it because what we're going to do is actually take out this needle, okay? We're taking out the left-hand needle. And I usually say, when you're doing something like this, just looking around desperately, because I should have thought of that, is if you actually put just a little bit of card or something underneath, just to make sure that when you unscrew it, it doesn't drop down inside your machine now it's the top screw here and I'm just going to undo it enough I've got hold of the needle but I am NOT going to take that whole screw out under no circumstances these screws are tiny so you really don't want to be losing that and as soon as I've taken that needle out I'm then going to tighten it back up again because I don't want it jumping out as I sew. On my overlocker, um, I've got a little, actually, I can take it off and borrow it. I've got a little bit of blue tack, and when I do a rolled hem, I just stick my needle on my bit of blue tack so I know where it is to put it back in afterwards. So we're now on to three needles. Now, if you don't want to overlock and sew everything and sometimes when you're working with things like linen which fray an awful lot frankly doing everything on the overlocker is not enough or if you prefer to do the fit on a woven fabric or something after the event I tend to then just have three threads on 
and I overlock everything and then I actually put the garment together on my sewing machine because that then allows me to adjust the fit etc okay so we're on that three threads and that's just going to give us um, that narrow so if I just go back to what we were working on before I do it on this side actually so you can see the stitching better so, so as you can see it's much narrower and that would be the finish that you'd get around all of your pattern pieces before you then go on to actually using 5 8 seam etc etc okay so even if you don't actually do anything other than that it's just going to give you such a lovely finish inside your garments so that's the three thread and it also means that you can just do a really narrow tiny little hem as well the other thing actually sorry while we're on the three uh, french seams so if you're going to do a french seam then you normally would be doing right side to right side well for a french seam the first go at it you do wrong side to wrong side and this is your first pass at your french seam because look you now don't need to trim it up because there's no bearding so when you turn it through to actually do you press it and then on your sewing machine you can then do your second pass at your French seam but everything's done it's it's trimmed it all for you so French seams absolutely fantastic as well now let's go on to the rolled hem always follow your instruction book so that you get everything in the right order but it is so easy to do this there's just a few processes so we've already done the needle we've taken the needle out I said about the S and the R setting here so this is your blade so I'm going to drop the blade because behind the blade in here is what's known as the stitch finger and that is the thing that keeps those zigzag stitches of the lower and upper loopers apart but we kind of want to get rid of that because we want to encourage it to roll so what we need to do is push this second one in we've dropped the blade out of the way and you can't do this unless that blade is out of the way i'm going to push that out and then this little red button it literally slides it back from s to r okay and then i'm going to put my blade back up okay so no stitch finger i'm also going to move this one to rolled hem setting on my stitch length because i want it to be a much closer stitch i'm going to take it to the r setting the differential feed is going to be relevant to the fabric that you're using okay so again you're going to test out with that if you're on the 9300 same process um there isn't this button here but on your stitch length there is uh, an r setting on that okay so we should be good to roll so we're all set up for the rolled hem now so first thing up this is actually some uh, viscose and i've spray starched it a little bit just to give it a little bit more oomph <laughs> So have a look at that. That is such a beautiful finish. And as I say, if you're working on summer tops and you've got a little flouncy sleeve or a hem on a camisole or a skirt even, I mean, obviously I've used contrasting threads on here, but you match the threads in, you won't see it, or you use the contrasting threads. Contrasting threads, actually two-sided on a ruffle or something like that would look really lovely wouldn't it so you wouldn't have to hem all those huge ruffles there's a lot of ruffles around this summer as there were last summer and uh, a rolled hem on a ruffle oh my goodness that is a time saver that's for sure so we've also got things like um this silky 
uh, I think this is a, a crepe, a lightweight crepe satin. Um, lovely for little cowl dresses or bias cut, things like that. Um, now, this won't give the best finish because I've got a size 14 needle. In. Usually with something like this, I would be using a Microtex, a Microtex needle in here or at the very least a size 11. So, like I say, nice finish. It would look, I think it would have a better finish if I'd used a size 11 on that, but I would normally use a size 11. You can change the sizes out on your needles, but they must be the HA1SP needle. Um, the only time I don't use those is, as I say, if I'm on something, uh, a silk that's very unusual or difficult or stubborn, and at that point I will put in a Microtex. Um, so what else have we oh organza this is a silk organza so again these are the kinds of kinds of fabrics that you will often avoid I'm not going to run the whole lot but these are the sort of fabrics that you'll often avoid because you think oh my goodness how the earth am I going to do a really neat nice hem on there well you don't need to and as I say once that's ruffled these can look absolutely stunning can't they so there we go that's the rolled hem um, one thing that you do need to remember is putting it right make sure you do it in the right order so I tend to do the stitch finger first so drop that push that back to S so I know my stitch finger is back in place then bring the blade back up so I'm now on the narrow hem okay I'll go back to the standard hem there take my stitch length up and then the last thing I'll do is put back in my needle And one thing I will say about putting the needle back in, okay, it's the same way. I'm just going to loosen that screw off and then come in and push it up. And I try and get it on my nail. Now, I will take a photo of this when it's done. The needles should always be offset. So this left hand needle will be slightly higher than the right hand needle. OK, like I say, I'll stick a photo in the corner. So just make sure. And then my other double check is I crank it towards me just to make sure that it's not hitting anything. Because if I put that needle in wrong, then as soon as I start running that machine, the first thing that's going to happen, it's going to hit something, snap the needle. Um, and then you've got to do everything all over again. So that's always just worth a bit of a, a safety check on there as well. So further to the rolled hem and just getting a little bit fancy, I've just quickly on this one changed out and I've put one of these metallic threads on the upper looper. OK, this is what I mean about playing with it. And as I say, we've we've sort of barely touched the surface today, but most of the time that's all you're going to be doing on your overlocker. But it did occur to me that as we were looking at, um, you know, shiny, sparkly kinds of summery things, that this was worth a look. So, as I say, it's on the second one, not the first one. That's a deliberate ploy because that obviously is one of the easier ones to thread. But with both of these, bear in mind, they don't go through the needles, which is why it's easier to put something a little bit more unusual in there. What you do need to check, though, is that the tension is happy. I tried a much thicker one and I had to drop the tension um, quite a bit. I put it in the lower looper and 
but it was a little bit too thick for the finish I was trying I was trying to do a rolled hem finish and it was a bit too thick for what I was trying to do but we'll get on to that at a later stage so I've gone in here with this gold sparkly okay and it's all set up for my rolled hem and off we go so I think you can hopefully see how pretty that is just that little bit of sparkle so if you were doing a you know little girls dresses for weddings or um summer picnics and things like that uh, maybe time to get a little bit more sparkle in on the back look still really really neat but just that one little bit of sparkle in there is rather nice isn't it so i'm hoping that um that might have inspired you to maybe play a little bit more with your overlocker um, let's bring you around to the front so yeah I'm hoping that that's going to inspire you a little bit to have a bit of a play with your overlocker and particularly if you have not tried the rolled hem you really need to to get involved with the rolled hem um, absolutely brilliant especially as I say for those lighter weight fabrics um, there's so many pretty fabrics out there that I think uh, a lot of us do tend to avoid <laughs> because we know they're just going to take a little bit more um, finessing shall we say when it actually comes but you know there's a point when you have to say I can't literally just sew with cotton all the time much as I would like to so if as i said any questions or anything like that please pop them in the comments below um and next month i won't do the next overlocker one straight away because like i say i'm i want to get a bit of uh questions from you guys about what it is you actually want to know about first um and next month i think we'll do something a little bit more creative um and uh ready for the holidays something to play with maybe on uh, we need to look at a few more of those stitches don't we so i have a little plan up my sleeve for then okay so anything that you want to know pop in the comments um if you can give a little thumbs up that would be brilliant and if you're not subscribed if you want to subscribe then you will be notified when the next video comes live um and other than that spread the word that would be lovely uh, if you know anyone who's got Janome machines and you think might benefit then the more the merrier and I shall see you next month